guys and we are here with my brand new deck which really doesn't have a name yet like when I'm in when I made my wolves deck it was a lot easier to name obviously but this one it's like it's kind of a bounce deck it's kind of a discard deck so I might call it bounce discard I don't know or might just be born and call it blue black red and um, blue black green calling it blue black red would be stupid but yeah I mean uh, without further ado this deck has been a lot of fun I've made a couple of last minute changes which I'm not sure I like but it's worth testing out which I'll go through as I go through the deck First things first is I run three thing twices and this was one of the last minute changes I had to cut a thing twice and believe me that broke my heart. Thing twice is such a good card in this deck. It is like basically two draw spells and it just it's just a fantastic I mean it's probably the best blue card in general so that says all you need to know about it. Next we run three dissolves. Dissolves are really good in this deck because it helps counter your like opponents removal if they ever if they've got removal for your big creatures or if they've got big creatures themselves it helps you get around them board wipes is it's just it's a counter spell it, it does what it says on the tin read and it is probably i'd say it's probably the best one in this deck i mean this format i mean there's a, there's an argument for traumatic visions but i think generally this one is better so that's why i run all three next you run two pestamite because pestamite is actually surprisingly good in this deck it was a card which i was just experimenting with and then I, had, I only had a one-off to start off with, and then uh, I drew it, and it actually won me the game. Because it's so versatile, which is where it comes in good. I mean, generally what it's going to be doing this deck is just hitting the air for two a turn. But if you need to uh, tap down one of their big blockers to get the final damage through, it can do that. If you need to untap a land so you can play two spells in one turn, you, it can do it's just It's a fantastic card, and it's really, really... I mean, there was a time as well, which when I was playtesting with this, when it tapped down my opponent's... I had I had I had another card further along. I mean you'd probably guess if I said bounce deck, but I've got species gorger in here. And I just kept bouncing a uh, Pestamite into my hand and tapping down my opponent's only black source and he promptly rage quit because obviously he was mana screwed. But yeah, I mean it's it's such a versatile card that it's it definitely I wish I could run up more. I, I had to make a lot I mean, this is the first deck I built where I put in every card I'd like to play with. And uh before I was about three quarters of the way through it said you can't have more than 100 cards, so that's when I realised this deck was going to be tough to cut. But I suppose I better be zooming in on the cards as well, just in case people don't know what they do. But uh, yeah, I do explain, <laughs> but people like to see the art and stuff, so yeah. This was definitely a, a de hard deck to cut. Next we run 2 Undying Evil. Undying Evil is good in this deck, because a lot of my creatures have entered the battlefield effects. And a lot of my big creatures, which don't, need protection. <laughs> and Undying Evil does that, because it even makes them a bit bigger as well, so... Really, really, really strong card in this deck, and yet again, it was a hard cut to cut down too. You don't want to see it too often, because I mean, I don't have a flood of creatures which I want to protect. But it does come in handy, and I'm always glad when I've got one in my hand. Next, we run all three Brain Maggots. Brain Maggot has quickly become one of my favourite cards in this entire format, just because if, if played right, it can completely destroy you. Like... People, I, see, I don't know why, but at the minute, I see a lot of people, like, playing this card incorrectly, like, I've, I've seen a guy play it, and I, I had, I think I had three lands in my hand, and then nothing but till a six drop, and a cult of it, and a guy decided to take one of the six drops. In that situation, you take the cult of it, that would have completely shut me down. I would have probably just lost that game on the spot. This guy, if you take the... You want to mess with their curve so badly, so you play this guy turn 2, you look at their hand, they've got a turn 3 play, then they've got nothing else for it, you take the turn 3 play. Obviously if they've got like a shock, you're going you're gonna to have to take the shock, otherwise stealing anything else is pointless, but this guy is he's really versatile, he's like, he really just frustrates opponents if you steal the right card. So he, he is definitely running all 3 of these in my deck. Tribute to Hunger, I'm also running all 3, this is regrettably the only removal in the deck apart unless you count some of my creature spells later on but this guy he uh gains power and generally you're going to be uh like trade no bouncing creatures so this guy becomes a lot better because he can bounce something not important then tribute to hunger and gain all their life so running all three i mean i'd love to run more removal but i'd say in black this is my personal favorite removal there's, there's an argument for like some of the biggest stuff like Flesh to dust, or even if you wanted to get really like uh, dangerous, you could run assassinate with a uh, because assassinate kills all tapped creatures. Well, not kills all tapped creature, kills a tapped creature, but uh, 
with Pestamite, you can tap down their big threats and then assassinate. But I mean, that's up for that's up for debate. You know, I'd recommend if you did do that, you'd have to run more pa more Pestamites. But it's it's an interesting idea, and it's one I've just thought of now. But yeah, at the minute tribute hunger staying in. Next, we won three Liliana Spectres. This guy discards an opponent's card, and it's really, really, really strong, especially if they've only got one card in hand. Generally, if you keep bouncing, I mean, this guy, if you, you keep sending him on the battlefield, they keep discarding the cards, so they're not really gaining any cards. So this guy really can. Plus, he's a flyer as well, so he also he has the same. He's a, this is basically like a different version of Pestamite in this deck. Like, I consider them equal equal draws in this deck. Like this guy, he discards a card, Pestamite taps stuff down. They're both 2-1 flyings, which can get over your opponent's head and start dealing a lot of damage that way if they don't have removal for it. Which, if they're discarding a lot of cards, they probably don't. So, really, really, really always happy to see this guy in my deck, so... The mana in this deck is surprisingly solid as well, so I've, I've, the double black has never really shut me down. Same with Dissolves, double blue. I've, I haven't been uh, shut down by that yet. Next, we've run one Indulgent Tormentor. This was also a last minute change, I used to run both all two and then I had to cut one to make room for the next card actually, but uh, same with the Think Twice, this is what I cut, I cut this, one of these and one of the Think Twice. This guy, he's really strong, he's one of my favourite black cards, He's because they, they have to make a tough decision every turn. He's also flying which is helpful if they don't have removal. The reason I did cut one is because he doesn't have an end of the battlefield effect, which is like and he does so he doesn't really gel with a lot of the deck and I've always said most of my decks which run this guy he, he he's what he's the one card that doesn't gel he just always finds a way in this time he was just one step too far so I had to cut one obviously so I consider him a bomb in this deck which is why I only run one and why I justified it to myself it's the longer the stick guy stays around the re your opponent's really in trouble if this guy stays around for a couple of turns yep so then next is the card I recently just added which is monomania this is pretty much the ultimate discard because I don't have like I think the problem with this card in my opinion is that people when I generally see people run it they will like I don't know like they'll turn three mind rot turn four Liliana Spectre and then this guy is just a dead draw because they're, they're down to one card anyway basically yeah ideally you want to save their mind rots until after you've monomania they've kept their most important card and the next next turn you uh Mind draw and then just get rid of both their cards. I mean that's that's generally what you want to do. So I think Monomania in a in discard decks you generally don't want to have like all the mind rots. Why 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 I'm not running mind rot? Because it's just it doesn't gel well ironically with uh, Monomania unless you've Monomania at first. So I run both of these. I've played tested a couple of matches with. I haven't drawn it yet, but hopefully we can see it do some work. If, if this if this hits your opponent, if they're a control deck and this hits your opponent, it's so devastating they have to choose one card which they think can save them next we run our black main bomb which is shouldered shouldered you could probably tell was in this deck this guy it's i mean g give me a black deck this guy doesn't fit in apart from like a really aggro early game but uh swamp walk swamp walk if they've got black they can't block it that's not even that's not even really important because if they don't have a removal you, they, you've won anyway because you get start getting creatures back from the battlefield. A lot of my creatures have end of the battlefield effects. That, that generates fantastically well. And they also have to start sacrificing creatures as well. Which is another part of my removal. But I wouldn't consider shielded removal. Because it's a 7 drop basically. Next we move on to green. Where we have all 4 elvish visionaries. This guy draws a card. He gels really well with species gorger. Because he can just keep spamming card draw. And give something to block. And it's a chump block early game. It's... It, it's it's just green in in like uh, deeper end of the pool green deck. This guy will always find a way in, and this guy in this deck found all four of them in. Next, we run three cultivates. Cultivates mana fix. Really, I mean, you've, this deck is quite demanding on the mana. I need double blue, double black, and triple green. So, cultivate really helps fix that. You just you generally get what you need if you've got like a triple green card in your hand. You, you get double green with it if you need it, and it's it's obviously mana fixing and a bit of ramp, so it's it's good in this deck because it helps you get to the deeper end of the pool faster. Next, we run a card I haven't actually used yet, and I mean I've, I've play tested this. This guy's been in since the start, and I've I've drawn him a couple times, and he's really saved the day. But I haven't actually used him in any other deck apart from this, which is Master Admirers, which he in his battlefield draws you a card, which is good, and then whenever you cast a creature spell, 
you can bring him back from the graveyard, which is also good against control decks. Because it can never really get rid of him. He just keeps coming back and keeps drawing your cards. And yeah, he's he's really strong in this deck. I needed something like sort of mid gameish, like a four drop. And I didn't particularly want to run Grave Bomb Muse because I don't know, I just didn't think uh I don't think it gels well in this deck because uh, just I just I'd, it was between this and Grave Bomb Muse, I just thought I'd run this because he keeps coming back from the graveyard. And he's gonna end the battlefield effect, which makes him slightly better than Grave Bomb in my opinion. In this deck anyway, Grave Bomb is a fantastic card. Also a hard cut in this deck. But Mass Admirers is good. Really, really strong card. Glad to see it. Next we run two Pelica Worms, which is the triple green. This is just this is this card just says value on it. I mean, trample, gain seven life, draw a card when it dies. I mean, it's if this guy is on the battlefield, he's never going to disappoint you because at at worst he's going to uh, draw you a card unless they've got exile. I mean, so apart from that, it's just a really strong card, and he'll also have gained you seven life, which can save the day if you're getting quite low. Next we run uh, the, the the main crux of the deck, like the the bounce deck, and which is the Din Rover Horror. This guy, when I when this guy when I first saw this guy, I tried to build the deck with him. It didn't work. This was like when I didn't have any of the premiums and stuff. Now now I do, and we've got all these new cards, and this guy is fantastic. I mean, if they've got zero cards in hand, this says kill target creature, and it doesn't even say like dies. It says bounce and discard. It's it's really funny that way. I think I had a game where I completely locked down my opponent, where I just kept uh, bouncing his single land he needed. I think he had he was like on four black and one white. I just kept bouncing the white. He had zero like one card in hand, and I just kept making him lose his whites. And then he was just uh, he quickly left after that. This guy completely shuts down deck. He's really strong. He's also a four four body, which is fantastic. I don't generally like to bounce him if I've got like a one one and they've got no no cards in hand. Even if you do have to, like, just say you've only got this guy in Species Gorger on the field, it's it's disappointing, but you're still getting value because you, you're returning lands to their hands and making them discard cards. So, yep, he's really strong. Run, up, run two of them. I don't run the third one just because you don't want to see him all the time because he has a six drop. And finally, we run two Species Gorgers. I don't, like, yeah, again, I don't want to see all three because if you've, if you've only got this guy, if this guy's your only creature in your hand, he is useless. And Species Gorger is, he is the bounce, he uh, forces you to put stuff in your hand. I wish it was May, but then he'd be a lot more than 5, he's a 5-5 five, five for 6 as well, which is fantastic. But he'd be a lot more if he, if it was a, if you could choose whether to bounce something or not. This guy, this guy has won games, he's, he's a body, I mean, people, you always think of this guy as a bounce, but you've got to remember he's also quite a big guy, and he can deal a lot of damage if not unchecked. And most of the time he'll eat removal as well, so it's, it's pretty strong that way. So there is the deck. I mean, I quite like the curve on it as well. I mean, I've, it kind of curves up, but I've got a lot to do on turn two and th turn three. And then I've got nothing really much going on, which means I can still cast a couple of them guys. I'm pretty happy with the curve on this deck. It's pretty strong. I still have only lost one match with it, and I've played tested about 15 games now. And let, let's move on to the lands, so I can show you what lands I run. I'll go on to the gates first. I run all three uh, full copies of all three gates. I wish there was a triple land in these colours, unfortunately it's not. S same thing as last time, you can run, like, I don't know, you could run Arkham Sanctum instead of Demir Gate if you want to try and psych your opponent out into thinking you've got white spells. I'm not doing that simply for, honestly, more for clarity than anything else. Just because it makes it a lot more complicated to go through the lands in this deck. But if you did want to do that, I wouldn't blame you. You just you just remove three Guild Gates and put in three Arkham Sanctums. Because they are the same card, this Arkham Sanctum is better. I'm just doing it for clarity's sake, and yeah, I mean, so we run all four of them because generally the colours are equal. We have a a bit less blue, but uh, black and green are very similar in colours. But we also need like double blue early game for dissolves and stuff. So that's why that's it, it worked out like this, and it's been pretty solid so far. So I can't really argue. And then uh, we move on to the single lands where we run four green, four black, and three blue. Which takes us up to 23 lands, which is, I think this is the first deck I've actually went under 24, which it's, I promise you it's not influenced by the wolf deck, but yeah, it is, nah. It's because I've got so many, so much card draw in this deck, like I've got my Think Twices, I've got Elvish Visionaries, all four of them, I've got Master Admirers, I mean, Pelico, it's, I've got loads of card draw, so that's why I feel comfortable dropping down to 23. And yeah, I mean, this is the deck, and it's it's been performing really well so far. I've been having a lot of fun as well. 
still still waiting for a couple of appearances from cards such as Monomania and a bit more from Mastered Myers, I wouldn't mind. Everything else has really turned up. So yeah, I mean, th thanks for watching. I uh, hope you can see this deck do some work. Uh, I won't save changes just because I'm scared I might have moved something around. But yeah, I mean, thanks for watching. Hopefully tomorrow you can see this deck do some work. If you've got any uh, cards or ideas in the deck, like what you think, Nikki, this should really be in your deck, let me know and I'll, I'll try and fiddle around with it a bit more before the episode comes out. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.